Now, what if I told you guys that Slantis had just introduced another brand new engine, and unfortunately, it is not a next generation Hemi V8 engine. But this engine is kind of important because all you guys who, uh, let's say, like the Pentastar and stuff, you may be seeing this in the Charger sometime soon for a cheaper version. So I want to talk about this particular engine in this video and how some of the technology from this engine, the Hurricane N Line 6, could make its way into a next generation Hemi V8 engine. And we're going to talk about that right now. Okay, well, we're 52,000 friends and the 56% of you guys who watch these videos over and over and over again and haven't joined the channel yet, help a butter out, help me get to 100,000 subscribers. So make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, find that crazy little hype button, which I don't understand why YouTube has yet another thing to put on there to basically say that you like somebody's video stuff. So make sure you do all that crazy, goofy stuff and uh, let's get right into this video. Now, obviously, I don't necessarily care about this engine because at the end of the day, it's still just a inline four hurricane based engine and stuff. But this engine does have some pretty good nice points about it. And it does give me some very good insight to what Slantis could do for next generation V8 engine and stuff. Because some of the technology can get moved over to a brand new engine in the future. And if Slantis is smart, they'll do the same thing that GM did and announced they're making a next generation V8 engine and stuff. This particular inline four engine, I don't think, just from looking at the stats and stuff and just seeing how the inline six Hurricane has not been a sales success for any vehicle that has been in, I think this inline four engine is basically gonna be the exact same thing. It's not gonna be a success, it's not gonna move the needle for Solanus, and you're not gonna see vehicles all of a sudden get into record sales numbers and stuff, right? At the end of the day, you live by the Hemi, you die by the Hemi, bad engines for life well you get the pun from bad boys but let's get into the stats now i'm not gonna go over every single thing that i pointed out here especially i'm gonna show on the screen so you go read through this but i had ai basically scrape all over the internet give me all the things and there goes all the sources right there too so you figure exactly where the stuff come from but i want to go over some very significant stats that are going to be basically relevant to this particular video right so this particular engine is a two liter hurricane four turbo engine is going to be in the 2026 jeep grand cherokee in its lineup this particular engine is rated at 324 horsepower at 6,000 rpm and 332 foot pounds of torque from 3,000 to 4,500 rpm this particular engine uses a turbulent jet ignition system with a small pre-chamber on each cylinder and two spark plugs per cylinder a pre-chamber and a main chamber for faster more complete burn i think i saw the motor train with a tell you that certain spark plugs ignite depending on what you're doing as a driver now let's speed right through this right so they're gonna have a variable geometry turbocharger they live a 35 psi boost and nine percent of its peak torque is available at low rpm between 2600 and 5600 rpm this engine gonna do a miller cycle and uh they have dual and port injection with a liquid air intercooler if you wonder what a miller cycle is it's basically like a dumbed down version of the atkins cycle it is more efficiency tech in order to make the engines more efficient. Jeep claims a 20% more power while using 10% less fuel than the old two liter turbo it replaces. In the Grand Cherokee, it is estimated for a six to seven second zero to 60 time, towing up to 6,200 uh, pounds and a 506 mile range on a single tank of gas. Uh, let's see, manufacturing the Hurricane 4 will be assembled in Dundee, Michigan. Planets indicates additional work in Kokomo as production increases. And I don't know exactly what vehicle that this engine is going to go in after it goes with the Grand Cherokee, because we know it's going to happen. But the Pentastar is going to be done in the next few years. I put up here on the screen the UAW contract that says that the Pentastar and the updated Pentastar is going to be gone in the next few years. And I think this is going to be the turning point for Atlantis, and I think they're going to struggle going forward because once that Pentastar goes away in a few years, I think they're basically SOL because all the name brand vehicles in that brand is going to be way too expensive for the average person to buy. Grand Cherokees, Durango, uh, Charger, Ram 1500. Like once that Pentastar goes away, there's going to be no affordable vehicles because if you look at it like this, right? 
The Grand Cherokee 2026 with a Panasar V6 starts off at $40,000. Now, if you go step up to a hurricane version of that, an uh, inline four version, it jumps up $6,000 to $46,000 to get that vehicle. You had a couple grand for taxes, a couple grand for destination, and you're essentially for the cheapest hurricane version you'll get of a Grand Cherokee, it's gonna be around 50 grand. If you go look at Dodge, for example, who just really announced a few months ago their inline six engine and stuff, that vehicle starts off at $49,000. So the cheapest version of the Dodge Charger is literally gonna be over $50,000. The cheapest Grand Cherokee with a hurricane, just like the Dodge Charger is, all those circles will be over $50,000. These engines are not cheap. If you go look at Direct Connection, where I showed you guys, the Hemi's are way cheaper than these smaller engines. These smaller engines cost more money. I don't know why they cost more money to build or they just charge more money for them to get their R&D investment back and stuff. But this is not going to do well for Solanus in the future. Within five years, they're literally going to have zero vehicles under $50,000 unless they make compacts, right? They're going to make a tiny Cherokee. They're going to make a tiny sports car. Those are going to be the only vehicles that the average person can afford. And it doesn't matter what they do, right? They don't matter if it's electric drivetrain, hybrid drivetrain. They seem to cannot make vehicles cheap. And without the Hemi and without the Pentastar, they're just SOL. Because, I mean, that's why I'm going like, they need to make a new version of these two hinges. Without those two engines, I think they're going to struggle and they're not going to do well. And they're going to keep losing sales every single year. Because the Pentastar was in a ton of cheaper vehicles, especially in the $30,000 range. Because uh, a lot of people bought Pentastar Chargers and Challengers. Those were like almost 50% of sales for the last, what, 10 years. And now you're not going to have the Pentastar, especially in a Charger anymore. And they're going to basically try to go, well, you know what? We can't really make a cheaper charger so we're gonna make you a tiny car then you know depending on how it is most people ain't gonna want it because we're probably gonna put a tiny engine in there that no one's gonna want to drive so i'm just saying man i remember an era right where we had like the avenger that didn't do very well i remember we had what the dart that didn't do very well we had all oh, the caliber that piece of crap car so there are some crappy cars especially intermediate intermediate sized cars that Let's say Dodge has made or like some of these little SUVs they made to try to be cheaper and stuff, but they was all crap and they all failed and bombed in spectacular ways. So this company does not do very good when it comes to making budget minded vehicles. So to me, honestly, like I said, I just hope that they actually go take some money, put it towards the Hemi and stuff, put it towards the Pentastar. That way they can at least attempt to make engines and vehicles that people actually want to buy. Cause I mean, I actually asked AI, for example, hey, look, you know what? Take some of the technology from these new engines and stuff and apply it to a Hemi, right? Regardless if you want to call it a Hemi or a Madam or whatever. So I had, I like, look, if I wanted to take like a, a Hemi and basically do all the technology upgrades, a little plasma junk, um, all this other crap on there they put on there, Apply to a five liter, right? So I actually like, look, here, do it to a five liter. It's about, you know, a five liter Hemi with all the technology and stuff. We're probably going to make about 450 horsepower. And then with either a single turbo or twin turbo, you can probably make between 590 and 950 horsepower. And if you put a supercharger on there, you can probably do up to about 15 PSI, probably between 520 to 750 horsepower. I mean, that right there to me is like Hellcat numbers out of a smaller v8 engine and stuff so i don't think nobody would have a problem if slans came out and said that yeah we're gonna make a smaller v8 and stuff we're gonna take some technology from these hurricanes and put it towards that engine and stuff i don't think nobody would have a problem especially if you just went and do direct injection and stuff to help with more efficiency um they already put like cylinder activation i think what with that mds crap on there so they already do some things but i mean they can at least go put direct injection and some other things in there to make these engines more efficient in order to pass the times and you know, instead of just doing this band aid for the next four years, because you never know who's gonna get elected. Everybody didn't think that uh, the guy who's in office now was gonna get elected twice. So you just never know. And you need to go hedge your bets because people actually want the Hemi. People have bought the Pentastar in large numbers and stuff. And maybe you support what your customers actually want instead of going this European route. And I understand making these inline engines and stuff. Trust me, I do. I, I know you got it for the rest of the, the world and stuff because those particular markets. Do those type of engines and stuff 
but we're not the rest of the world. There's a reason why North America is number one market and everybody else is just a different market, right? So I would just say that they need to go and to me personally, do like GM, announce their investing, blah, 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 millions of dollars towards making a new next generation V8 engine. You don't necessarily have to say it's a Hemi V8, just say you're making, you're investing $500 million towards a next generation V8 engine and stuff. And then have me and TK and No C and everybody else guessing if it's gonna be a Hemi, if it's gonna be a, uh, a a Magnum or whatever. But at least get people excited because these engines, like this inline four, no one woke up today going, like, "Oh my God!" They introduced this whole brand new inline four engine. It's gonna change the game. It's gonna give me another fifty some thousand dollar car that I don't want to buy with a tiny engine that sounds like crap. So I'm just saying, but. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Do you guys think that this new inline four hurricane is going to move the needle? Because I personally don't see it. And I think the Grand Cherokee, for example, is going to struggle in sales like it's already been doing. And uh, I don't see it going to get uh, a nice little sales boost because they went with a even smaller engine. They're probably going to sound more like crap. And uh, like I said, I don't understand what vehicles this engine can get put in because it seems though it's still way too expensive. And uh, oh man, like I, I I just don't have a very good feeling, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. Now, if you want to find out about a Gen 4 Hemi project that I did hear about that they were doing, I don't know whether they started it back up again or not, but you can check this video right here. And until the next time, I'm out.